Good morning or afternoon, wherever you are. This is Reverend Pam Gagan from the Center for Spiritual Living, Pleasant Valley in Camarillo, California. Happy first day of Passover, Palm Sunday, and Holy, the Vedanta celebrations. Uh, so it's a happy Holy Week to all. Enjoy the service. Good Sunday, everybody. Hi there. I'm Reverend Lynn Chaplin Noe from the Center for Spiritual Living, Pleasant Valley, and we have a wonderful, wonderful hour of spirit flying high today. We have, of course, our spiritual leader, Reverend Pamela Gagan, and Reverend Betty Ann is having a wonderful celebration of her anniversary, so she won't be with us today, but we will have our quote for the day. Pamela Bailey is here, Buzz Noe with the buzz, and he's our pr practitioner of the day. Bill Rotella is our musical inspiration. It's a wonderful, wonderful morning, and our vision statement is awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence, and the way that we do that is teaching and demonstrating spiritual principles for living an abundant and fulfilling life in a welcoming, compassionate community. These are our flames of faith. We believe there is one power, one source, and that there are many paths to that source. By lighting these candles of faith, we honor all religions, Buddhism, Christianity, Sudism, uh, Sufism, Hinduism, all the isms and whatever, and all others that step forward in love. There is that one fine thread that connects all religions in the world, and that thread is love. We are love, we come from love, and we celebrate our oneness within us all. And now I'm very, very proud to give our quote for the day by Reverend Betty Ann Brennan. I freely, joyfully, and confidently walk in spirit, committed to being transformed. Isn't that a wonderful way to start your week? And now it's also my pleasure to introduce Daniel Neymod with our first song for the day. Get ready, my soul, I'm diving in, get ready, my soul, I'm diving in to the deepest kind. To the sweetest kind of life Get ready Get ready My soul Everything I've ever done Everything I've ever seen Lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To the present moment Here To a new beginning Here And I'm seeing life 
so clearly now get ready my soul I'm diving in get ready my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life get ready get ready my soul cuz here I Oh, thank you, Daniel Namod, and for all of your generosity of sharing your music with all of the spiritual organizations, uh, you enlighten the world. So now it is my honor to introduce our lead practitioner, Pamela Bailey, uh, with our opening affirmative prayer. Thank you, Reverend Pam. And this wonderful spring morning, Thank goodness, here in Southern California, it spring has sprung. So let us just come together on this wonderful day and turn within however you are comfortable. And just in this place, take a moment and take a deep breath. And as I do so, I remember that there is only one, one God, one spirit, one life, one love. And that is the source of all of it. And so as I allow myself to sink into that feeling of just the love, just the light, just the goodness and the order that life is, I know that I am one with that. And that is also who I am. That out of that clarity, that shining, that brightness and that goodness and that caring for one another and our planet, that is who I am. And so this wonderful day, as we're looking at East meets West and having our wonderful musician and our announcements and our prayer treatments, just going into this service, just grateful, open-minded and delighted to be here. And I am again, grateful for all of this. And I say, and so it is. And back to you. Okay. And back to me means that it is now back to our wonderful Buzz Noe with uh, not only is he our poet Lord, Lord, if I could only say it, Lord, and also with what's the buzz? Take it, Buzz. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Pam. 
And uh, thank you all for being here with us today, which marks the first day of the Passover celebration. Let's honor Jewish heritage throughout our nation. <clears throat> this demonstration of our blessings from the one God above lets us celebrate our fam family and our dear family's love. It's proof that life brings us the blessings we seek. So here are the announcements for this week. At 9 a.m. weekdays on Facebook Live, Reverend Pam's morning meditations will allow you to thrive. The theme is start your day with peace of mind. It will allow you to recognize that life can be kind. At 7 p.m. Thursday, also on Facebook Live, our midweek uh, spiritual uplift will boost your divine drive. It's me who is going to be leading this April Day Fool's Day session, but I'm not fooling about love being the focus for this session. Through March into April is an event that we can all cheer, the season of nonviolence, which started out right here. It runs till April 4th, that's a total of 64 days, and with it we can change the world by using peaceful ways. The link to participate is on Constant Contact. You'll learn there how to make a peaceful and positive impact. And do keep in mind that our center is always here for you. So please let us know what we can do. The spiritual treatment that we provide will lessen your stress and allow you to thrive. You can call and leave a request by the phone or send us an email from wherever you roam. We trust someday we'll meet again live but until then, our center will help us to thrive. So please do donate to keep our center going so we can be here to keep your wellness flowing. Two other places where you can lend a hand, so please do give them whatever you can. Ventura County Rescue Mission provides the homeless with much good, and Ventura County Food Share feeds the needy in our hood. A reminder that our center is part of Ralph's Community Contribution Program. A portion of whatever you spend at the store gives our center a small donation or more. So please do sign up or simply renew and Ralph's will contribute at no cost to you. Our center's code number is JE859. You can sign up at the store or do it online. Another way to help our center for a while is to shop online using Amazon Smile. When you complete your purchase for the items you got, it'll donate to our center right on the spot. And today we celebrate Passover Sunday. Enjoy your pet pals and make it a fun day. And that's it for the announcements of what soon will be. Now here's your practitioner of the day who happens to be me. So uh, thanks again for being here. And we will soon be hearing from our Reverend Pam Gagan and our guest speaker, Lisa Coffey, as they will discuss this week's theme of preparing the way East meets West, which I'm sure will conjoin quite nicely with the CSL talk title for this Sunday, which is Commit to Transformation. Now, I always like to assess things from an analytical standpoint, and certainly from that perspective, these two concepts make combined sense. Because in order to commit to transformation, which is what the center is regard, telling us to do, you obviously have to prepare the way, which is what Reverend Pam and Lisa will be talking about. So I'm excited to hear what these two have to say about the concept. In reviewing the Center for Spiritual Living theme for the week, they emphasize that it is one thing to have a vision, which they uh, say always should be focused on the positive aspects of life peace, love, kindness, compassion, these positive expressions of our human nature that we should constantly be envisioning throughout our lives. They then remind us that it is one thing to have this vision in our minds, but another is to allow ourselves to engage in self-transformation in order to allow that vision to become manifest in our lives. So they provide a wonderful material example of how this might work as they compare the infinite perfection of life's divine flow coming forth from the oneness of the inf infinity of God to the flow of water coming through a hose. So the spigot that provides that flow of water is always at full flow. Then if you attach a hose to bring forth that flow into your garden, there's a potential for the hose to have blockage somewhere in there that got stuck in the past. 
So these could be fallen leaves, a cobweb, a few splinters that got into the hose. And <clears throat> they now restrict that flow of water. So even though it is fully, full, flowing fully from the spigot, coming out of the end of the hose will now just be a dribble of that full flow. So they suggest we look at ourselves as that hose attached to the spigot of God's divine flow. It will allow aspects of our past experience, current stress, upset, to block the flow. And then what's coming forth in our lives is simply going to be a dribble of that divine flow. So it is a reminder that aspects of our life that have occurred that could bring up some negative elements in our minds, which will then create an obstacle to the full flow of our divine vision becoming manifest in our present being, which makes sense. So the solution to that, as you might need, uh, as you might imagine, is to occasionally clean out your garden hose to identify and remove those blockages and thus allow the full divine flow to come through us. Same thing with ourselves. We have to look and see what might be causing that obstacle, causing that blockage, and then look for how we can transform ourselves, clear it out, and allow that full flow. This is the transformation they call for us to allow in our lives. When we commit to that transformation, we are now opening ourselves to allowing the full flow of divine perfection in and through us out into the universe. So <clears throat> Reverend Pam and Lisa, who was online this morning with Swami M discussing the near-death experiences and how they can open us up to recognizing our spiritual perfection, will also allow us, uh, and they will also address East meets West aspect of this same subject. <clears throat> Lisa is quite an expert on the Bhagavad Gita and other spiritual, uh, Eastern spiritual concepts, which she always demonstrates how they can join with the teachings of our founder, Ernest Holmes. In fact, Dr. Ernest Holmes has a quote, which is a good illustration of this same idea. He says, the great spiritual geniuses, whether it was Moses, Buddha, Plato, Socrates, Jesus, or Emerson, have taught man to look within himself to find God. So valid, and that's from Dr. Holmes. And there are a few other quotes in reference to the idea of manifesting a vision through self-transformation. This one from Roy T. Bennett. Don't let others tell you what you can't do. Don't let the limitations of others limit your vision. If you can remove your self-doubt and believe in yourself, you can achieve whatever you thought possible. And there's a reminder that we can only see a short distance ahead, but we can always see that there's plenty that needs to be done. And that's from Alan Turing, again, advising us to look and see what might be in our way of getting to where we want to be. And this last one from Dr. Holmes. With a penetrating vision, you can dissipate the obstruction, remove the obstacle, dissolve the wrong condition. And that, once again, will allow us to move forward to the vision of the perfection that we want to manifest in our consciousness and bring into the world. So... <clears throat> I'm going to close out with a treatment on the same subject. So I'll be saying these words in the first person. Please follow along and make them your own. As we say here and now, that I know that here and now, in this singular moment in the continuing evolution of the time and space continuum, there is one source that manifests all that is, one infinite expression of perfection, manifesting our lives and all that is in the universe. <clears throat> we call that oneness, that one infinite expression of love and creativity as God. We know there is one God, <clears throat> one source that all that is. And we know that we are right here, part <clears throat> of that manifestation, coming from that source and thereby connected to all that is all that was and all that will be through the oneness of God. We are one with everything, all life, all that is, all other humans, all other living species in this universe. We are all one. And we know that as we recognize that oneness, as we join in with the unity of life and come forth into that unity with the expressions and the consciousness of love, of kindness, of compassion, 
generosity, giving, sharing, and caring. We know that as we bring these forth and remove all obstacles to them coming fully manifest in our lives, they are coming out from us, through us, and as us into the universe and becoming an expression of God to everyone and everything that is. <clears throat> I am ready to hear what our minister and our guest speaker have to say about the same idea, knowing it will allow me to better focus on how to better transform myself and allow the divine flow of God to be with me, through me, and as me. And I thank God for the awareness of this connection, of this unity, of my ability to be the oneness of God and take care of all of the obstacles and remove them from my fully recognizing and expressing this vision. And I do release these words, these thoughts, these prayers to the oneness, the perfection that is God, knowing that as I say these words, know them to be so and know how to remove the obstacles to them coming fully forth. They will be manifest in my life, in this universe and in the lives of everyone that I encounter in this world. And I do release these words to the oneness of God, knowing as I say them, express them and know them, they are indeed here and now. And together we can close by saying in unison, and so it is. And thank you again for being for, here for us. <clears throat> and so it is that I am now ready to bring forth our musical inspiration for today, our wonderful Bill Rotella. Thank you. All right, thank you, Buzz. Okay, I'm gonna play a song for you uh, that I wrote uh, in full appreciation of mother nature, seeing that we're heading up upon spring here. This is called Way Back Home. Come before autumn leaves Sip beneath the blossom tree The scent of lilac and honey Just you and me I'll read you my book of rhymes While you weave your heart with mine You can find your way she will lead the way back You can find your way back home Let's watch the stars below Under this blanket she wove Eyes of turquoise and tangerine She's the colors that paint your dreams She can find your way You will find your way back You will find your way This pure horizon, imagine what can be. tree the scent of lilac and honey just you and me just you and me just you and me oh 
thank you, Bill, so yeah. much. And it's spring is it's what it's all about today. And Mother that, nature. Yes, Mother Nature and oneness and allowing that that beauty to just, as Buzz said, flow right through us like the open faucet to just embrace it and be open to it. Thank you. It's wonderful You're to welcome. have you with us right always. So it is my honor to introduce our guest today, Lisa Coffey. And I invite you to go to Coffee Talk and, and see all that she does. It's amazing. Uh, that's her website. And we're talking about today um, preparing the way, East meets West, on this first day of Passover and, of course, Palm Sunday. And all of the celebrations from the pagan uh, throughout all the time in history, including the uh, holly, the holy, uh, the Vedantas uh, celebrating what is uh, uh, a way of talking about spring and transformation. And it's interesting that all of these dates, it's not, it's not interesting and it's not coincidental. Uh, it, it, these traditions have been passed down and they all come together right around the same time. And they're about the truth of finding out who we are uh, being and also uh, in the certain case of Passover, it's when the Jews were passed over, uh, supposedly by uh, the king, to um, um, receive and uh, become part of the Passover celebration of uh, getting rid of, of that which the king wanted to get rid of, which were the Jews. So in the traditional faiths, as the people celebrate the arrival of Jesus into Passover, uh, it becomes Palm Sunday and they laid palm branches all over the ground. And the palm represents not only strength, but when he was let in on the donkey, that re represents resilience and stubbornness. And uh, that's what Jesus was. He was resilient, uh, stubborn, and also willing to let go and let God on, go on to his next transcendent experience. And I turn this over to Lisa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, you know, what's so fun is Easter has always been like my favorite holiday since I was a little, little kid. And this is the week approaching Easter. And it's so significant in terms of this is also the arrival of spring and it represents renewal and all that. And I remember when I was little, my um, grandmother had made me a bunny costume because I was, you know, in Winnie the Pooh, there's that character rabbit. So in sixth grade, I was rabbit in Winnie the Pooh. And my grandma made me a bunny costume out of a tablecloth of all things, but I had the hat and everything. And there were these little kids that lived, lived next door to us. And I would put on my costume and early in the morning, I'd hide some eggs in their yard, you know, and I just thought that was the coolest thing that I ever did. So, <laughs> but I've loved it ever since. Um, and then I discovered holy, which is really in line with all of that. Holy is spelled H-O-L-I. And it takes place on the first full moon in March. And it's a two-day celebration in India. It starts um, on the day of the full moon. You know, the full moon comes at night. So the day of. And on that day, they have a big bonfire in the evening as the sun is setting and the moon is coming up. They have a big bonfire. And that represents burning off all the negativity of the old season of, you know, the dark cold winter so burning off that negativity and that's the way they kind of prepare for the newness of the next day so you know up, leading up to that they're preparing by um getting the firewood and getting the decorations and getting the sweets and preparing for this two-day celebration and so that night there's the bonfire and then the next day in the morning is the holy celebration. And this is a lot like Easter in that um, it's all about colors and spring and renewal. And the way they celebrate is they have these um, powdered paints. So everybody, everybody wears white, like all white. And then you chase each other around and throw these colored powdered paints at everybody. So everybody's getting color like all over them. 
And, you know, now they even do like colored water so they can have, you know, water balloons that they throw and everything. And by the end of this whole big fight and everybody participates, the little kids through the grandparents, the neighbors, everybody just gets in on it. And it's this big, fun, festive um, celebration. And then at the end, everybody's just like covered with colors all over the place. And then they take pictures and everything like that. And it's just hilarious because it's on your skin. It's on your clothes. It's all over the place. You know, and, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and originally the way they thought of doing this, it's because like back, way back, it's a Hindu tradition. Um, Krishna, when he was a little kid, he was this blue color and he he loved all the gopis, all the girls, the cowgirls and everything who loved him. But he was like embarrassed that he was blue. He thought, oh, they're not going to like me, you know, because I'm blue. And then uh, Krista's mother said to Radha, like his favorite gopi, well, you can paint Krishna any color you want. And she took some of these paints and was like painting his face and they became all silly and lovey and everything. And so then that's how they decided we're going to celebrate love and spring by throwing colors on each other. <laughs> oh, oh, and you know what's so interesting is all of them, what you're talking about is letting go of like, when we talk about spring and we're talking about bringing more color in and more joy in, it's like that transition from the dark, you know, the dark of winter, the cold of winter and transcending into the light and the fun and the joy. And my favorite line is we're here to give God a good time. That is our main mission here on earth. And so all of these things remind us uh, to come back to God. And I loved uh, this morning what... Uh, 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 Swami M said about, I, I asked him, I said, well, when we were talking about life after death and, uh, you know, and near death experiences, uh, and he's done all this research. And basically he was saying also, when I asked about the mystics, when they see the oneness and they see the allness, and he told the story of how, uh, Krishna, and do you remember that story? Will you share that story again with us? about the mystics and what they, and what Krishna was saying, Ramakrishna yeah, was, Rama saying when he was saying when he was dying. Yeah. Yeah. He said, it's all God. It's all God. You know, you, when you are in that enlightened place, it's all the same. You, you don't see any separation. Um, there's a, a famous story Ramakrishna used to tell all the time about this, um, this man who was a very devout sadhu and uh, he was just begging for his food or something and he got totally beat up um, and the monks found him and brought him back to the monastery and they're like oh they're fixing him up and helping him regain consciousness and they're like who did this to you who did this to you and they're like oh it's you and we, they're like what do you mean it's you that did this to me the same person who's healing me is the same person who hit me he saw everybody the same he couldn't differentiate between people and that's yeah. when you know you really have that enlightened eye that you can see everything the same you know, and it is so, and, and he said that uh, when they said, don't die, we don't want you to die. You know, you're Krishna, you, will you not die? And he said, well, then I would be dishonoring, you know, my purpose here. And it's the same as Jesus well, on the cross and in the original Aramaic version. And I always say this uh, around this time is when he was on that cross and the, uh, the, the, uh, the Christian Bible changed it, but in his original language, he did not say, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He said something almost like Krishna said, when Krishna said, I am honoring my mother, and that is the greater good, and that is what we are here to do the greater good, letting go of the body is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And Jesus said, 
my God, my God, this is my destiny. This is what I was, I have come to do. And he was obviously choosing exactly going on to that next great experience and using his life as the metaphor of letting go and, and going on to that next highest good, into the light, into the love of the oneness, of the beingness, uh, and that you've come on this earthly experience uh, uh, where there is no beginning or no end for the soul, but the body has done what it was supposed to do and it's done enough and it's time to go back home. Yeah. Yeah. And didn't he, Jesus also say, forgive them father for they know not what they do. Exactly. Like he, he was more concerned for their suffering, the suffering of others than his own suffering. Yeah, you know? yeah it, exactly. And the so all souls is the same. It's interesting how these traditions overlap so much because I know that, you know, in Christianity, the egg represents fertility and the newness of spring. And that's how we came to decorating Easter eggs. But, you know, the Easter eggs are white and then we dye them these different colors. And in holy, the clothes are white and then we're throwing colors at them to make them the different colors. And in, um, in different religions that, even the colors have symbolism. So in Hindu, the blue represents Krishna. Um, and because Krishna has the blue skin, because Krishna is as vast as the sky. He's infinite. Um, the red symbolizes marriage and fertility. Um, yellow is used to celebrate happy and joyful events. And then green is used to symbolize new life and no be and new beginnings. So those are the colors that we use in holy. And these are the same colors that we use dying Easter eggs too. You, well, it also, when I was in India, there were two things. You were the one who finally told me about Krishna being blue. I asked anybody and everybody in India, and we traveled a lot of areas from east, north, south, west. And I said, why is Krishna blue? And I got the same, of the, the Indian answer. <laughs> which I never understand what that means, that wobble. Yeah. I think it means I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> or it means yes and no or whatever. Yeah. But, but they didn't the know. And you're the, <laughs> but you're the one who told me that uh, basically he is the, the vastness of the blue sky. He, yeah. is, uh, he is eternal as we are too. We are the alpha and the omega. And in that oneness, we see the allness of it all. I was going to tell you another story when I was in India of who of those who have visited know that uh, cows are honored. They are the, they are honored and all the tutus, the trucks, the elephants, everybody move over for the cows who at during different like Diwala uh, celebrations and stuff are painted. They're painted. And many of them even during the year are painted all those beautiful colors and my joke was oh my god the cows in india have better jewelry than i do they are done, <laughs> and they are so honored and so loved and uh, honored uh, and all those colors do mean something as they are honoring the deity of the soul of the cow uh, in india by the way what did you know about uh, why they are honored more than cats dogs anything else well, a lot of it is because they give us life and nourishment with their milk. So a lot of it is because of the milk, because out of that milk, you can make yogurt and you can make butter and all that stuff. And a lot of it is also because of Krishna when he had the cow herds, you know, how he treated them as sacred beings too. But, you know, every animal in some way contributes in Hinduism, um, the elephants, of course, because they're so strong and because the trunk is very discerning. You can take that big trunk and lift a log like this, or you can take the little part of the trunk and pick up a tiny little nut, you know, so animals have so much to teach us in every way. And even um, squirrels, which, you know, because I'm a big squirrel fan because of Greg and everything, I thought, hmm, and I asked my friends at the temple, what about squirrels? Are squirrels in the scriptures? Are, do squirrels do anything? And they said, yes. There's a story where um, Shiva, one of the gods, was making a big castle or something. 
um, to protect the people and all the animals are helping out and the schools are like, well, can we help out? Like, what can we do? We're so small. And he said, yes, you can help out because with your little hands and your bushy tail, you can help put the sand between the bricks. So that's what they did. So every animal has something to contribute, just like every person has something to contribute. You know, and during these times, I think they, I invite everybody to be reflective. And what do they mean to you, no matter what religion you are, uh, what faith you follow? Uh, and in Jesus, I think mainly he was saying that our spiritual power is not in this world. We, it is in us, not, uh, not as us in this physical body all the time. And so it lies in and expresses through a quiet grace in the loving presence of uh, we're truly centered in this Christ energy, which I've always seen Jesus as bringing as the avatar of love and bringing love to the planet. He basically taught us how to love if we would listen to his words. And as you said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgive their neighbors as you would forgive your own self. You know, forgive everybody, love everyone and forgive everyone and everything, which is a high calling when you're on this planet at this point in time. I always use it to support my points of view, not others. So <laughs> when yeah. the ones I don't agree with, I say, how can that be a loving act when my, my highest calling is to see that larger picture that Krishna saw, that Jesus saw, that Buddha saw, that Mithra saw, that uh, Zoroastra saw, all of these people saw the, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega of everything, and basically said, be in this moment, transcend this humanly uh, uh, activity around you, because this is your journey to remember who you are, that authentic self, mm -hmm. and, and the love that you are, and the power that you are. Yes, and there's so many parallels between Krishna and Jesus. And I remember one Christmas I talked about their births and how that all happened and how the stories are so right in line with each other. But it's the same thing with this type of this time of year also with um, Holy and with Easter. And when you talk about forgiveness, that is how... Uh, holy ends because at the end of the day everybody cleans up you know you take a shower you wash your clothes or whatever and you sober up <laughs> after having so much ah, fun there and then you dress for the evening and friends and relatives gather together and exchange sweets and by exchanging sweets it's showing that there is love between us no matter what happens. So it's a festival of forgiveness and new beginnings. And it's meant to generate harmony within society. So it, that's what it's all about in the end. You know, Jesus was all about love, the path of love. Krishna was all about bhakti, the path of love. Here we are again, right? I love, it's perfect. It's perfect. And I think that all of these celebrations, no matter what they are, they come to help us remember that we are one with that highest and um, uh, source. And you can call it Buddha, Jesus Christ, whatever you want to call it. It is the consciousness of the love. And so I believe that the story uh, of uh, Jesus is our story. It's our awakening as we grow and understand the way of God, the highest and most uh, energetic presence, we become ready to show the full depth of our true power. And as we become ready to give life uh, to that true power, then we become our authentic selves. We truly transcend it all. Uh, and I, I don't know how many lifetimes and how many universes how, throughout the entire cosmos uh, that it takes for us to remember that we are the power in the presence of the love that resides within all of these deities. They all came from that place of love and to remember to bring joy. Uh, and I think those, these celebrations are to remember um, the birth of uh, and transition transcendence of uh, awareness and oneness with the thing itself yeah and we can actually do this every day you know in our spiritual practice of meditation and prayer singing chanting you know remembering the name of god 
whatever it is for us, if we bring a little bit of that into our day every day, life is beautiful. Yes, yes, it is. And so when we go within and we look at all the symbolism too, like you used all the symbols of uh, uh, the colors. And when Jesus rode in uh, to Jerusalem, you look and you see that the, the donkey is, uh, he's riding and it's stubborn and has his own mind. And that's what we're like too, unless we open up uh, to something greater. Or it, we, or I always say, is the donkey riding us or are we riding the donkey? <laughs> so, and if there's confusion in how we feel uh, between fear and love, we remember that riding in these symbols of riding in as the colors like like krishna being blue to the vastness of the sky riding into Jer jerusalem represents our abiding consciousness of inner peace and one of the ways we can remember that is meditation 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 whatever works for you in that meditative state and learning more about um, the spiritual uh, aspects of all of the religions i think is one of the greatest gifts that you can bring to yourself and also representing when we go through all this, the mature awareness when the Christ made his transition, when Ramakrishna said, I am, I am here to move forward in my uh, love for something greater. Uh, all of these things, we are surrendering to the Christ nature, the Krishna nature, the God nature of it all. Absolutely. It, this is a special week, you know, between Palm Sunday and Easter. And I think it would be good for all of us to just reflect and see how um, we can move forward as a new beginning and treat this as a new season with new opportunities for us. How can we learn and grow? How can we serve? How can we love more deeply? You know, something as simple as that. Yes. You know, uh, my, my, uh, <laughs> uh, this last three and a half weeks has been, uh, very interesting and I did not set myself up for failure, which I want to pat myself on the back for my kids. I have a small house, lots of land, but a small house and my two grandchildren and my daughter and my son-in-law moved in with me in preparation to move next door, which is right. There was a time span and uh, it was interesting because the odd person out was my son-in-law who had, was not feeling, this is my interpretation, was not feeling uh, like he had no control here. And, and with the baby especially, we could not leave the baby alone. My house is not um, childproof or safety-proof. It's got some mint steps going down into different areas. And so, uh, but it was interesting. And I, all I could do was when uh, he was upset and it necessarily wasn't upset with me, me. He even said at one time, he said, this house is so difficult for me. And I, the only thing I ever said during this last three and a half weeks, it's like that at a girl, I said, Ian, I said, this makes me feel badly because there's nothing I can do about it. If I could change this, I would. And, and five minutes later, he came back and he said, you know what I just said was about me. What it means to me is I can't do what I want to do because I have to watch e, uh, 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 Ronan, the baby, every single minute. And he said so. He basically apologized. And that was the only uh, area that I felt was really the highest challenge. All the rest... Let them rip up the house, I figure. You know, the kids, it'll all come back, Lisa. Let them scratch the table. There's varnish. You know, I'm not going to say anything about this. And it was really interesting how uh, it, it left really wonderful, uh, good times in this small house uh, together, too, uh, in my memory. So it's yeah. interesting. And I think eventually the kids didn't know any difference. And uh, Katie was just trying to, she was trying to be perfect, get everything perfect. And she was exhausted. Uh, but that's so, the house where Katie grew up, right? Yes, exactly. So they have little yeah. kids in that house, you know, it's like a yeah. kind of thing. How yeah. cool. and and you know, all the, nobody moves from this area. I mean, not nobody, that's not true. Franny just moved uh, to be with her children. She's like 90. 
And so she, and that house was uh, built by her husband. And mm -hmm. so it's only had the one owner, but interestingly enough, they all said, uh, uh, oh, we saw Katie grew up. This is so great. She's coming back. She's come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Yeah. That she came back. I'm I don't know anybody who goes back to their hood. You know, so this is amazing. So anyway. Thought. Like yeah. when she was little, could you have pictured that? Oh, Katie's gonna grow up and move next door to me. I mean, no, is? no, 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 no. Isn't that amazing? And she wrote Franny a letter. Uh, the, when they were the, the price, which I won't tell you, uh, Katie said, this is our limit. Uh, and it means more to me, you know, this is our financial limit, you know, when they were asking for money, so more, you know, for more for the sale of the house. And she said, it would just mean so much to my family. I have such fond memories growing up there. I went, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> but wasn't that a lovely, it was a lovely coming home for all of us. And I think eventually for Ian too. But his parents, they live like, a, a, you know, two minutes away from here too. So it's good. It's, it's That's very great. good. Yeah. It That's is. great. So, so in this birth, in this temple of spirituality, it symbolizes the, the Krishna letting go of his ego, Jesus letting go of his ego in that earthly body. This is my closing statement, and I want you to close. And it goes into a letting go of the temptation to be in our ego, uh, ego our ego. See, I'm thinking of spring again, the eggs, <laughs> one of the traditions here. And uh, coming forward in these awareness uh, literally uh, reminds us to release our attachment to the temptations of this earthly life and the materialism of this earthly life and spend more time embracing the good of our oneness with the everythingness, which is the nothingness, which is the allness. I say you can't, it is the beginning and the end. And more in my life, I only know when I go to that place of oneness and in that place of giving us, then what happens is more good flows in and through and as me like the hose, as, as Buzz said. When I am in judgment and attached, I close off that energetic loving presence that so many, gave, so many people have given their, their lives for, for me to wake up and be aware in my soul of soul, in my authentic self. That's my closing here on Passover <laughs> and yeah. on uh, Palm Sunday. <laughs> yeah. And these traditions and these holidays have gone on, you know, from as long as we can remember. And I think this year, especially with everything we've been through, that having a time to recognize spring and renewal and new beginnings and forgiveness and coming out of the darkness and into the light is just so powerful and so meaningful to us right now that we really need to embrace it with a lot of joy and a lot of optimism, you know, a lot of forgiveness, just a lot of open heartedness and, you know, love coming both ways, giving and receiving that love. Oh, that was beautiful. And uh, before I, I thank you so much for being with us. And now it is my honor to literally introduce Bill Rotella, who is always with us during our in-service, in-person holiday uh, 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 plays and, and musical presentations at Christmas. And what's so interesting is he's the one who said, we're going to do Christmas back in the sanctuary. So, yay, Bill, welcome. Right, yeah. Oh, you got to put and, it out there, Pam. Yes, I'm going to, oh, absolutely, yeah. and live into the letting go of the attachment of anything that held us back during this last year, knowing that it, we developed in greater ways than we could have ever imagined, Bill. And I know you have too, more than your long Jesus hair. <laughs> in I gotta, honor i gotta stimulate the economy pretty soon here you know <laughs> and lisa that anyway, was great lisa yeah. and pam i enjoy it really enjoyed listening to that that was awesome oh thank you, oh, what a yeah, great thank you lisa thank you honey yeah. so i'm gonna i'm gonna play a song just about um generational love this is a song i wrote about an old man and a and a young boy <laughs> As 
an old man listening to his radio waiting for a song he used to know thinking about a girl and a kiss he stole at the wishing well young boy walking down the old school road mind full of dreams pocket full of holes here's a man singing about as long ago at the wishing well the boy caught him wishing and he wondered why he said excuse me sir but this well's been dry a long time the old man knelt and tossed a dime in the wishing well he said some fear the hangman coming some hear the angels strumming i have my reasons for coming to the wishing well the old man said age can really change the game you're in a hurry and i'm a little slow to the chase but i'm pretty quick at remembering those days at the wishing well the boy asked does the swell really bring you good luck the man winked and said the trick is just don't ask for too much but son love is one thing that there's plenty of at the wishing well but some fear the hangman coming some hear the angels drumming i have my reasons for coming to the wishing well and there are faces i still see from wishes i still dream and the love that i still need An old man listening to his radio meets a young boy with some room to grow. Share some what's coming, he'll need to know at the wishing well. Young boy meets a man who's pretty cool for being old. Hopes they meet again sometime and tells him so. Hopes they get started in making wishes of his own at the wishing well. It's an old man and a young boy just sharing hope at the wishing well. Wow, <laughs> that just embodied everything we just said. You know, we choose the hangman or the uh, hope. hope and the wishing well, and also how it's all there in our consciousness. From the beginning thank you bill that was amazing. my pleasure my pleasure thank you cool. and now it's my honor to introduce rev lynn with our offertory <laughs> thank you so much i like the idea of that old man who's pretty cool for being old i like that one <laughs> so this is our opportunity to demonstrate our gratitude for this wonderful service today and our wonderful teaching so it, when we're together at christmas We'll all, in the sanctuary, we'll all put our offertory on our heart. But right now, we'll just do that in mind. And please say this along with me. Divine love blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. And that's the way it is. And there are so many opportunities to give to this wonderful center. And thank you for watching our service today. And if you feel that you've received value from this experience, please support our ministry with a tax-deductible donation. Visit our website at www.csl-pleasantvalley.org. 
We accept PayPal and Zelle. And there are other opportunities as well. Remember mail? Yeah, you can do that. Your sacred donations are more than ever appreciated by mail. So you can send them uh, in an envelope <laughs> endorsed to CSL Pleasant Valley, 221 East Delhi Drive, Suite Number 1, Camarillo, California, 93010. Again, our website is www.csl-pleasantvalley.org and our email, and we really do want to hear from you. We want to stay connected with you. Even email us and ask our practitioners and ministers for spiritual mind treatment. Talk to us at cslpleasantvalley at gmail.com. That email address is cslpleasantvalley at gmail.com. And here's Rev Pam. Oh, thank you so much, Lynn. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, thank you, everyone, today. And so we're just going to go straight into our uh, closing treatment right now. And so I ask us just to breathe in all this spirit of the spring, of embracing something new as you relax in your chairs and in your minds. Let go. Let go and allow, go into the allowing of the new way of being on this planet. In this evolutionary process, we've been through a lot this last year. It was like on high speed. And so let us live through this spirit and let us know that as we let go and we let God during any celebration you're uh, having right now in this wonderful period of spring, where everything is springing forth in greater ways, in new ways, that you let go of all of those obstacles, that you clean out your hose, as Buzz says, and allow that energetic presence of God is, I am, to flow forth in higher ways than ever before. And I believe with all my heart as I stay in the I am, please personalize these words. I am that power. I am that presence. I am that oneness. And I connect right here and right now with the allness of it. And I am learning and revealing who I've always been. And my authentic self comes forth to shine its light and brightness and joy and love and absolutely unconditional awareness of God is I am in myself and all as I say namaste peace out may the God within me recognize the God within you and may you recognize the God within all in this beautiful time of nature and I let go I let God and together we say and so it is and so it is I want to say Thank you to all of you who have been with us today. Uh, thank you, Lisa Coffee, for being our guest. And again, you can see her at Coffee Talk, go on her website. Thanks, Bill Rotella, wonderful music. Lynn, Rev Lynn, and, and Buzz, how wonderful uh, to have you with us. And behind our scenes, and Pamela Bailey, who did our affirmed, our, our lead practitioner. And behind the scenes, Marcia Beebe, who keeps us organized. Our wonderful Spencer Gagan, wave goodbye, everybody. And uh, Ivan Korolinski, who does our Facebook. Yes, I love that. Our Facebook piece, our, our Facebook piece and page. <laughs> so have a blissed, blessed, holy week wherever you are, knowing that the holy within you is connecting with the W holy within it all, the oneness of it all. Mwah! I love each and every one of you. See you tomorrow morning on meditation. Bye.